All right, good afternoon. Uh, in a very short while, we're going to be joined uh, by Diane Corner, the Deputy Special Representative of the Secretary General and Deputy Head of the UN Mission in the Central African Republic. She'll be joining us by video link uh, from Bangui to give you an update on the situation in that country. The Special Coordinator for the Middle East Peace Process, Nikolai Mladenov, said today that the hunger strike by Palestinian detainees protesting against their conditions in Israeli jails enters its second month. It is imperative that a resolution be found as soon as possible in line with international humanitarian law and Israel's human rights obligation, Mr. Mladenov said. With growing tensions on the Palestinian streets, Mr. Mladenov hopes that current efforts will result in an immediate resolution to the matter, which is in the interest of peace and ongoing initiatives to revive a political process. And he calls on all actors to exercise maximum restraint, show responsibility, and take all necessary steps to avoid escalating tensions. Um, on uh, Syria, on the humanitarian front, uh, we are very much alarmed by reports of an attack on the al Kareb al safiye village in the eastern countryside of Hama today, reportedly resulting in the deaths of dozens of civilians, the majority of whom are women and children. A large number of people were also reportedly injured due to missile shelling. In addition to the people killed and injured, several people are reportedly missing and believed to have been kidnapped. We do not have further information at this time on the incident or who may be responsible. And uh, the special uh, envoy for Syria, Stefan de Mistura, continues to uh, facilitate the talks in uh, Geneva. And as you will have seen, he issued a press release earlier uh, today on his intention to establish a technical process to address constitutional and legal issues in the context of the intra-Syrian talks. And from Iraq, our humanitarian colleagues in that country warn that there has been a sharp increase in the number of people fleeing western Mosul as fighting has intensified in the area. Lise Grande, the humanitarian coordinator for Iraq, said the numbers of people fleeing their homes in western Mosul are overwhelming. Large numbers of families are on the move and are leaving everything behind. She added that the number of people who are moving are now so large that it's becoming more difficult to ensure civilians receive the assistance and protection they need. As military operations intensify, a move closer to Mosul's old city area, we expect up to 200,000 people may, uh, may flee. She also added that without the generosity of people in other parts of Mosul city who are opening their homes and looking after displaced families from the western Mosul, the camps would have been overwhelmed long ago. As of today, the humanitarian response plan for Iraq requesting $985 million is currently 28% funded. Under the 2017 plan, approximately $331 million is being sought for the Mosul operation. And this afternoon, the Deputy Secretary General, Amina Mohammed, will leave New York for Brussels. Tomorrow, she will participate in the Foreign Affairs Council on Development and meet with senior U uh, European Union officials, as well as heads of UN system entities. Uh, the Deputy Secretary General will travel further to Switzerland tomorrow, where she will join the 13th seminar of special representatives and envoys that the Secretary General is attending in uh, near Geneva, and she'll be back here on Saturday. And the World Health Organization today said the medical experts are racing against the clock to contain the outbreak of Ebola in the Lakati Health Zone in a remote, remote part of the Democratic Republic of uh, the Congo uh, and the areas you know borders the Central African Republic. The zone is about 1,400 kilometers from Kinshasa, 350 kilometers from the, major, the nearest major town, Kisangani. There are only 20 kilometers of paved roads in the area and virtually no functional telecommunications. Speaking to the press in Geneva, the executive director of WHO's health emergency program, Peter Salama, said the first Ebola treatment center in Lekati General Hospital has been established. Protective gear has been dispatched to health workers and a mobile lab is being constructed and will be deployed in the area. Immediate repairs to the airstrips and telecommunications infrastructure are being carried out to allow the operation to continue successfully. 
And our friends at UNICEF inform us that the global number of refugees and migrant children uh, moving alone has reached a record high, increasingly nearly five-fold since 2010. According to UNICEF's latest report, which was released today, at least 300,000 children were unaccompanied or separated from their families while on the move in the years of 2015 and 2016, up from 66,000 in 2010. UNICEF says an increasing number of these children are taking highly dangerous routes, often at the mercy of smugglers and traffickers, to reach their destinations, clearly justifying the need for a global protection system to keep them safe from exploitation, abuse, and death. And our colleagues at the World Meteorological Organization have issued a report ranking the deadliest weather events, such as cyclones, tornadoes, lightning, and hailstorms. Cyclones top the list of the deadliest weather event, and with the deadliest cyclone being a tropical cyclone that hit Bangladesh in 1970, which killed 300,000 people. Tornadoes come in second, followed by lightning strikes and hailstorms. This is the first time that WMO is highlighting the impact of specific weather events, and the agency says it is doing so to raise awareness of the impacts of climate change and the need to increase resilience measures. More detail, WMO. And today, uh, two countries, Barbados and Indonesia, have taken us over the century mark. So we are now, the honor roll is now at 101. We thank them both. And before we go to Ms. Uh, Corner, I'll take some questions. Matthew. Sure, thanks a lot. I want to ask about Burundi and, and WIPO. Uh, in, in, in Burundi, there's uh, been uh, grenade attacks followed by mass arrests in this Musaga neighborhood, which is one of the most uh, uh, involved in protests mm -hmm. against the government. So give, particularly given the mass arrests, I'm just wondering, I'd, I'd asked you before a couple of Burundi questions, has Mr. Kafando begun his work yet? And if so, what does he say about these developments? Yeah. Uh, I don't have an update on Burundi, but I'll see what I can get from and you. And on, I, I, okay, uh, if you could, on, on, on the World Intellectual Property mm -hmm. Organization and its, its patent work in North mm -hmm. Korea, um, U.S. Ambassador Nikki Haley has, has said uh, in response to a question uh, that WIPO should have informed the Council of its patent applications and its failure to do so may have dangerous consequences. So what I'm wondering is, I know that you'd said you'd sort of just cited to statements mm -hmm. by, by others. What I'm wondering is from the top of the U.N. system, both in light of this comment and just otherwise, given, given the launches and given what WIPO has done, what has the Secretary had done in terms of speaking with WIPO about well, I think, you know, WIPO has put out a fairly clear uh, press release explaining in detail its, the patent application process uh, and how it relates uh, to existing sanctions regime. So I think, uh, to me, that explanation is fairly clear, and I would direct your questions uh, to them. So you're saying that Antonio Guterres accepts why, no, I'm, just saying, I'm just saying. I'm just saying what I just said. Right, but he's the head that, of the system. I, 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 I understand. Asking. I'm saying they have put out a very clear uh, explanation. You use some it. other adjective. I just want to know: Do you accept their? I, 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 I'm answering your question okay. in the best possible use of the English language that I have. Oleg, and then we'll go. Thank you, Stefan. Um, on Ukraine, there were two draft laws introduced um, that will have some restrictions for the activities of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. And there is some discussion happening whether this could be considered discriminate, discriminatory practice or some form of uh, violation of religious freedoms. And I know that the Russian Patriarch sent a letter to the Secretary General among a number of other leaders, including the uh, Russian president, the Ukrainian president, calling for uh, taking measures not to adopt this law. Um, I wonder if you could confirm whether this letter was received and also what is the SG's view on this issue? Uh, we, we do our best not to comment on, uh, on draft laws, uh, so I will uh, heed that, uh, that motto at this point. Uh, but obviously, as a matter of principle, uh, we stand for people's freedom to, to worship. But obviously, we're not going to comment on the details of something that's in draft. Yep. Stefan, why it took uh, Mr. Mladenov so long to issue a statement? Was it for the fact that uh, people on the ground in Ramallah and other places in Palestine accused, blocked the UN entrances and accused it of collaborating or being silenced on what's happening? I, I don't think the, the UN has been silent. I think we've said from this podium right from the start that this was an issue uh, being looked at 
from the UN and from uh, the Office of the High Commissioner for Human uh, Human Rights, and we've been flagging that uh, repeatedly. I think in his own statement, Mr. Mladenov acknowledged uh, the uh, the tensions uh, that exist in the Palestinian uh, amongst Palestinian civilians uh, as a result of the ongoing uh, on the ongoing hunger strike. Uh, I have a follow-up. Yeah. But it took him like 30, more than 30 days to issue such a statement. I think and Mr. Blanoff spoke out when he felt uh, it was the right moment to speak Is there out. somebody, did the UN request to enter the Israeli uh, presence and to meet with the hunger, Palestinian uh, That president? would be something uh, you would have to ask for uh, human rights uh, colleagues. Yes, Carol. Stefan, I want to ask about the Venezuelan opposition leader who's supposed to meet with the Human Rights Commissioner, right. but apparently he's not been allowed to leave the country. Um, I don't know. I I'd heard that there may be such a meeting. I'll uh, Just before I came in, I'll follow up and see okay. what the situation is. Edie. Uh, I wondered whether you had any comment on the killing of a Palestinian protester and the wounding of an AP photographer today in clashes in the northern West Bank. Uh, yes, so I've seen, um, I have seen those, uh, those, those reports, and I know Mr. Mladenov uh, condemns the reported killing of a Palestinian by an Israeli settler and the wounding of a photographer in the occupied West Bank. Mr. Mladenov added that this deplorable incident must be promptly and thoroughly investigated and those responsible uh, prosecuted. Carol, then we'll go to Matthew, then we'll go to our guest. Actually, it was a request. Next week, the Secretary General is having his luncheon with the Security Council. Mm -hmm. Could he come to speak to us afterwards? We will place we that request. Many questions. You do. Million questions. Indeed. Matthew. Sure. I want to ask you um, uh, about uh, UN security. Uh, Inner City Press has published a, 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 a memo to, to Mr. Peter Drennan, the head of DSS, basically in which it's alleged that Mr. Drennan buried a report of death threats against Irina Bakova, that, that, the, that a DSS contingent was sent to write such a report. <clears throat> there, the, 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 the report, the, the, the person writing the report, citing a fear of retaliation, has, has cited the Baghdad and Algiers previous attacks and has said that Mr. Drennan buried the report in part for personal political reasons in case Ms. Bakova became SG. And I think it's, it's a pretty serious... Okay. I have, I have, uh, I'm not going to comment on, he's on something. He's responded I, I, to I'm it, saying so. I, I have not going to comment on something I haven't seen. So can you get a comment If I learn of something, as soon as I, will, you can? I will, I always do things as soon as I can.